What's up guys, this is Ben from 606X and today I'm going to do a quick explanation of the unique features of our world's robot. So right away, you can see we have our wall rider uh, ball bearings right here. If we get pinned against the wall, we can glide easily out of it and not get stuck on anything. Uh, on the back here, we have our passively deployable uh, wedges. So our wedges are banded down and the band point is actually behind the pivot point right here. Um, so this allows the wedge to stay up and then if you push it down, then they just flip down and they'll stay down for the entire match. This allows us to stay in size with our pneumatic intake right here. So if the intake is up, then uh, the wedges are out of size. So we make sure the wedges are up in the beginning of the match. Um, next up, we have the rubber link funnel. So right here, you can see we have a whole bunch of um, compliant funnels. So if I grab a disc here, you can see that the disc doesn't uh, move through the funnel. But then if the pass, if the bot passes over an obstacle, then it's, it's able to come right through. Um, and then next up, we have our floating second stage. So you can see we have a three stage intake. One, two, and then three. So uh, this allows the, the discs to uh, not jam ever, basically, because the floating intake is um, hinged off of the third intake. This allows the intake to like accommodate for uh, clumps of discs or many discs entering the intake at once. Um, so we basically never had any jams. It was very, very good. Um, highly would recommend a double stage intake. We didn't use any tensioners at all. It's just like this. Um, next up, we have the flex wheel covers on the rollers. So this is really cool. We actually used our logo and put it on the flex wheel cover for the back here. We don't actually use any uh, Versa hubs. We just use two layers of Delrin where we cut the high strength axle profile into the center. And then we basically screw them in with the collar on the inside with some spacers to make it nice. And then we cut our rollers in half to save weight and also reduce profile. So then uh, if the bot scrapes up against the wall, the roller won't stick out of the bot and then get caught in the net. Um, next up, we have a lot of high strength structure on the bot. So we have a uh, high strength structure here and then high strength here. This allows the bot to have uh, more strength than a regular C channel. So it has uh, less torsion, which is the twisting of parts. So this, this center cross beam that goes through the entire robot uh, really helps in uh, making sure that the chassis doesn't twist. Um, next up, we have our two motor ratchet. So we have two motors, one here, one here. And then this they're connected through a center shaft here uh, where this is connected to intake always. This is ratcheted to uh, the intake and catapult. So our intake, you can see we have a very, very smooth ratchet. Uh, it's high definition and strong and thin because we use a, a half cut 24 tooth inside. We also use half cuts here to save weight and then half cut 72 tooth uh, with bearing flats for stability. So I can see it working again, like so. And then the chain runs all the way back here to the other roller. So we have four rollers powered by the intake, all by chain. And then it also uh, fires a catapult as well. There you go. Uh, we use a rotation sensor for the catapult just to know where it is at all times. We use PID as well on the catapult to make sure that uh, it retracts to the same point at all times. Next up, we have the limit switch for the um, Auton selector. So we have uh, one for selecting and then one for cycling. And we have the program printed on the brain. Uh, this is a lot better than using the brain screen for selecting programs because uh, we don't have to take the brain cover on and off. We have this little band to protect it as well. Um, and this is a lot more convenient because when the bot is lined up against the wall, we can just select it right on top. Super easy. Um, next up, we have the, um, the polycarbonate arms. So you can see we use a four bar here, but it's actually very unique because um, we don't use metal for this one. So it's, it's actually polycarb. It is, the structure is a tangent, but we use uh, these Delrin gussets to make it into a four bar. Um, and this basically helps angle the basket. So I'll release the catapult. And then you can sort of see the angle of the basket as I 
move it down with the polycarbonate arms. We use uh, double stacked layers for additional strength. So you can see that's actually two layers. And we use double stack layers uh, on a lot of places actually. So for the front skirts, I'll try and get a good angle here. We actually use three layers for the skirts so then they don't break at all. Um, and then we also use double stacked on the, uh, on the Delrin mounts as well for these ones. So the way that it works is actually, uh, these are, uh, they, f they form a line and then this, uh, the, the four bar travels along this, this line and you can change the angle of this line actually um, by changing the gusset. So using CAD, um, we adjusted the different angles of the, of the catapult so you can see as the angle goes down, the uh, arc changes. So it's, it's a pretty unique concept that we use uh, to change our arc and these sort of uh, swappable gussets were pretty pretty cool in that way. Um, we also used a lot of nylon nuts and screws um, to, to reduce weight, which was pretty useful. This bot turned out to be 18 pounds, uh, which is pretty decent, but it could be lighter. Uh, we just used a lot of steel everywhere. We used, um, you can't really see it, but we used nylon nuts and nylon screws for the uh, bearing flats uh, on these gears. And we have this little plate to protect them, but they basically save weight by replacing steel with plastic. Um, next up for the expansion, these cylinders are actually mounted inside of the C channel. So you can see right there. We use the, uh, we use the nut of the cylinder to mount it directly onto the C channel by drilling a hole, sticking the cylinder through and then screwing it in. So this allows us to mount the cylinders without using the actual mounting holes. And you can, as you can see, it's pretty strong. Um, and then, yeah, so the way that our expansion works is the bar pushes up and then these release. I'll just do that right now and see. Um, and this is the cylinders. Next up, we have um, this Swiss cheese bar. So this was used to save weight. It's um, 20 grams of weight, which is pretty good. It's, um, it, it didn't it didn't cause any any uh, downsides, so we just did it, and it was pretty easy to do. Also, the C channel looks super cool when it has holes like this. Um, we also did it for the cata plate as well to reduce weight on the end of the plate uh, to reduce to to increase the performance of our catapult. Um, and then we also used a variety of uh, slanted standoffs and and uh, shaft colors to provide support for the cata towers and the roller mechanism, which is pretty cool. So it just has a really unique angular design and provides good support for the catapult and roller. Um, and then next up we have the pneumatic intake. So we use a string instead of a, a, a directly mounted cylinder, which increases the protection of the cylinder. So as you can see, the string goes up here and then it pulls. There you go. So it's a little bit, um, the cylinder is less vulnerable than other bots. We also had a pneumatically retracting Odom pod, but we took that off um, because we couldn't figure out Odom in time. So yeah, that's, that's that. And yeah, good luck in over under.